Well, today we are continuing with our Bible exposition from the book of Acts chapter 25. And today we are one or the other going to consider the third part in our Acts chapter 25. And I want us to consider what we call Agrippa the king visits Festus. Agrippa the king visits Festus. So now there are verses before us that we are going to consider and that is verses are 13 to verses are 22 but before we get into the exposition of each verse it's important that i first read for us the verses and then we begin to carefully observe what is in the verses and then also see what we may be able to learn and apply for our day-to-day -day living the bible says in verses are 13 of chapter 25 of acts now when some days had passed agrippa the king and bernice arrived at caesarea and greeted Festus, verses 14. And as they stayed there many days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a man left prisoner by Felix, verses 15. And when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews laid about their case against him, asking for a sentence of condemnation against him, 16. And I answered them that it was not the custom of the Romans to give up anyone before the accused meet the accusers face to face and had an opportunity to make his defense concerning the charge laid against him, 17. So when they had come together here, I made no delay, but on the next day took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought, 18. And when the accuser stood up, they brought no charges in his face of such evil as I supposed, 19. Rather, they had certain points of disputes with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who was dead but whom Paul asserted to be alive, verses 20. But being at a loss how to investigate these questions, I asked whether he wanted to go to Jerusalem and be tried there uh, regarding them, 21. But when Paul had appealed to be kept in custody for the decision of the emperor, I ordered him to be held until I could send him to Caesar. 22. Then Agrippa said to Festus, I would like to hear the man myself tomorrow, said he, you will hear him. So those are the verses that are before us for us to carefully observe and uh, exposit, draw the truth out of them. The first thing that is very important for us to basically consider here is to consider some facts about who Agrippa is. About who Agrippa is. He was the great grandson of Herod the king and Drusilla's brother. And Drusilla is this one character that we covered in Acts chapter 24 verses 24. We remember when you go back to Acts chapter 24 and verses 24 the Bible says and after some days Felix came with his wife Drusilla who was Jewish and he sent for Paul and heard him speak about faith in Christ. And uh, the other thing that we can also consider about Agrippa is that his father was smote by the angel of the Lord and eaten of worms, which is also a reality that we saw in the early expositions of this book. We remember from Acts chapter 12 verses 22. Uh, that incident, the Bible says in verses 21, On an appointed day, Herod put on his royal robes, took his seat upon the throne, and delivered an oration to them. And the people were shouting, The voice of a God and the note of a man. Immediately, an angel of the Lord struck him down because he did not give God the glory, and he was eaten by worms and breathed his last. So, that was the father of uh, this Agrippa that we do now have as a new character here. So he's called Agrippa the second after his father. And the other thing about Agrippa the king is that uh, he was the financial officer of Rome. In one way or the other, he managed the financial affairs of that nation. So he was responsible for all the revenues, for all the taxes that were collected. So that was his main position. Now, the other character that we also need to consider that we do have in the text is this lady that is known as Bernice. The question is, what facts do we know about Bernice? Uh, as far as history is 
concerned. Uh, Bernice was the eldest daughter of Herod Agrippa I. Herod Agrippa I is actually the gentleman we have just considered in Acts chapter 12 verses 21 to 23 that was smote by an angel. So she was the eldest daughter of Herod Agrippa I. She was married to her uncle who was her father's elder brother and after her unlawful husband died she started living with her brother Agrippa II. And so those are the facts that we can consider about Agrippa II and Bernice who happened to be her sister. Now the verse says again in chapter 25, Acts chapter 25 verse 13, and now when some days had passed Agrippa the king and Bernice arrived at Caesarea, arrived at Caesarea. And uh, the thing also for us to consider, arrived at Caesarea and greeted Festus. The thing also for us to consider here is that like we have made it very clear in other expositions we have done that Caesarea was the place of residence of all Roman governors. And so Agrippa and Bernice came to pay their respect. We may basically say they came to greet Festus. And so that's why they came in a very area where the governor was residing and that place happens to be Caesarea. In verses 14, the Bible says, As they stayed there many days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a man left prisoner by Felix. The thing that we might basically also consider that we cannot fail to see in the text is that Festus sought for Agrippa's advice because he had just been appointed in the province of Judea and was not familiar with the Jewish customs. Yet Agrippa being a Jew by birth, he could use his advice on how to frame or structure the charge that must be sent to Rome when Paul was sent to appear before Caesar's tribunal. And so the fact that Paul was Felix's leftover, as we saw in Acts chapter 24 verses 27, he was now left in the hands of Festus. But Festus, not being more acquainted and familiar with the Jewish customs, so he sought the advice of a man born as a Jew to guide him on to how to frame or structure the charges that might, must be sent to Rome when Paul was sent to appear before, before the tribunal of Caesar. That is the thing as to why he actually unpacks everything that was to do with Paul's case before the king. But verses 15 adds in to say, And when I was at Jerusalem, so he goes back into the narration. And when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews laid out their case against him, asking for a sentence of condemnation against him. So what does Festus continue to do? The thing that we should also not forget is what we echoed in other expositions. That is the thing that is to do with the providence of God, ordering all issues, directing all issues and events. And all things are running after the counsel of the will of God to his own glory. So there is nothing that is coincidentally or randomly or by chance happening. Everything is ordered. There is nothing that is outside the providence of God. So whether it is the coming of Agrippa, whether it is the coming of, uh, uh, of Festus, just no one simple thing that providence is ordering all events. And the thing is that Festus was now narrating to Agrippa what happened when he went to Jerusalem, as we also saw that in verses 2 and verse 3, informing and how actually he was informed of the notorious crime uh, of, that Paul had actually committed and all of that. So he goes into that narration because we remember in uh, verses uh, 2 and 3 of chapter 25, and the chief priests and the principal men of the Jews laid their case against Paul and they argued him, asking, as a favor against Paul that he summons him to Jerusalem because they were planning to ambush him and kill him on the way. So that's the, the very thing that he again unpacks for Agrippa. Since he's seeking for an advice, he has to go back onto the beginning of the whole story. 
So, verses uh, 16 also comes in, which says, I answered them that it was not the custom of the Romans to give up anyone before the accused met the accusers face to face and had an opportunity to make his defense concerning the charge laid against him. So in this verse, Festus shares with Agrippa the reason he gave to the Jews for not delivering Paul in, into their hands. And that's the thing we also saw in verses uh, 4 to verses 5, which basically said this, uh, verses 4 and 5, and Festus replied that Paul was being kept at Caesarea and that he himself intended to go there shortly. So he said, let the men of authority among you go down with me and if there is anything wrong about the man, let them bring uh, charges against him. And so that's the very thing that you do see here. That uh, the main reason that Festus gave to the Jews was that no man, according to the Roman custom or according to the Roman law, could actually be condemned before his case was heard. That was actually very important. And what is also very fortunate enough is that even the Jewish law agreed with the Roman law as far as John chapter 7, the verse is 50. To 51. Nicodemus who had gone to him before, who was one of them, said to them, Does our Lord judge a man without first giving him a hearing and learning what he does? I hear in that. So they replied, Are you from Galilee too? Such and see that no prophet arises from Galilee. So this is the thing. These guys, like we made it very clear in other expositions, these guys were lawbreakers. These guys were not faithful to that which was committed unto them. They pretended to be the defenders of the law, the defenders of the temple, and everything that was to do with the worship. But this was all actually a way of them masquerading all their bad ills and intentions they had against the apostle for having told them the truth like we also made it very clear that if people cannot stand the truth that you are communicating if they cannot refute the truth that you you are teaching or sharing or unpacking what they will basically do is that they will attack you for saying that truth the thing is that they cannot refute that truth they have no way of actually reverting or actually opposing it in in, in a sense that what you're saying is not true but the fact that they have no stomach for the truth what they basically do they will come after you for having said that truth and uh, it's the thing we are seeing. Paul indeed did no wrong. As far as our last exposition, we also saw when he appealed to Caesar. He made it very clear that he had done no offense. The thing is that he wasn't trying to escape death, but he wanted to die for a genuine reason. They had to present the reason as to why. He had to die. The charges had to be backed up by the proof, by the outstanding evidence that whatever charges they were they brought against him were true, but they failed to present the truth. And Festus himself knew that these guys didn't have actually the evidence to all that which they were laying as charges upon Paul the Apostle. So the main thing that we all know from uh, the start of all this, these were all part of Paul's troubles that he had to go through. For actually, Agabus had foretold, and many disciples actually also told him of the very things that were waiting of him. And these are the things that were blamed because the gospel has to continue to move and go out to the kings, to the governors, to the what, and all those individuals. And so his challenges here, as far as Paul is concerned, it's a way and room for an opportunity of the gospel to be spread. So that is very important. Verse 17 comes in also, which says, So when they had come together here, I had no delay, but on the next day took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought. So in verse 17, what basically happens is that Festus narrates to Agrippa how he granted the Jews the promise he had made unto them, as we also saw in uh, our first exposition in chapter 25, verse 6. And so the rules of procedure were followed on both sides. 
the accusers were given an opportunity to lay their case and charges before the king. Later on, even Paul was given an opportunity to make a defense of all that which he was accused of. And so this is the whole thing that he's trying to narrate again to, to Agrippa so that he could be advised in a best possible way before he sends on Paul to the emperor. And so this is why it is the way it is here. In verses 18, when the accuser stood up, they brought no charges in his case of such evil as I supposed. Now, the whole thing here, even from men that never had a personal relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ, but you can see there is some level of integrity that is being made very clear in the pages of the scriptures showing us that even they that knew not the father and the son could see that there wasn't anything wrong against uh, with the apostle anything wrong that the apostle had done and so he frames it before uh, agrippa and says the guy was not charged with such evils as i supposed because by the time he actually was appointed he has an individual that was left in prison by actually felix and could be he thought the fact that this gentleman was left in prison he had done such evils outstanding evils uh horrific things but to his finding out the guy had not done such horrific things that would actually uh, put him in a place or a position of being condemned. And so you know that, that uh, Agrippa also picks that. Agrippa picks that very carefully and is like, okay. In verses 19, the Bible says, And rather they had certain points of dispute with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who was dead, but whom Paul asserted to be alive. The thing here is that in verses 18, like we have already seen, is that Festus proves to Agrippa that the charges that were brought against Paul were non punishable crime by civil law, such things as a violation of the Roman law. However, indicating that the charges of police accusers, they were not actually well supported, they were not convincing. And uh, verses 19 just plays out something that actually shows us the marks of the ignorance of Festus concerning the reality of the person of Christ and how he played it down by saying, rather they had certain points of dispute with him about their own religion which he sought not to know about that is Felix and about a certain Jesus as if Jesus not being very meaningful to him uh, since he's just a governor he thinks that they, that was the prime of each and everything and it's the common thing today with a number of individuals that have never taken an outstanding care, time to care about the person of Christ. Why is it important to know? Why is it actually very important to consider this person? His birth, his life, his ministry, his miracles, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension. Many do not care to know about this person. Their lives actually depend on him their lives depend on him for salvation or for their eternal domination but because they do not know the significance of this person is why you hear felix representing many people that have never come to faith in christ saying what he said but about a certain jesus who was dead but whom Paul asserted to be alive, indicating that Festus had heard about the gospel. He had learned about something concerning Christ. He remains guilty because where did he get this thing that is actually narrating and unpacking before Agrippa the king? So the knowledge of who Jesus is was made known to him because he had the case. As Paul was responding to his accusers, 
even festers had an opportunity to know of the person of Christ. And uh, if he died minus turning away from his sins and calling on to the Lord Jesus for mercy and for the forgiveness of his sins, I have to assure you, God damns no person but a sinner. Basically, that is an individual that will not believe in the claims of Christ. That is an individual that will hold on to other things that will not decide other things that will not actually secure him on the last day. So, Festus, just like many others that are unbelievers, he played down our Lord Jesus Christ, just called him a certain Jesus who was dead but whom Paul asserted to be alive, not showing care, not showing concern about the truth that concerns who our Lord Jesus Christ is. And so, it's a very huge lesson for us to know that, yeah, uh, much as these challenges were there, but even the governor had also learned something the same way Felix had learned something. But verses are uh, 20. Being at a loss how to investigate these questions, I asked whether he wanted to go to Jerusalem and be tried there. And so that is the very thing that we saw as far as Acts 25 and the verses are uh, 9 where Festus said uh, but Festus wishing to do a Jews a favor now that is one thing that he didn't mention to Agrippa but we know because we have followed the context and anything taken out of a context it results into what we call a pretext so he didn't tell the whole truth there in verses 20 because verses 9 shows that wishing to do the Jews a favor say to Paul do you wish to go up to Jerusalem and there be tried on these charges before me. So, but now in verses 20 says, being at a loss how to investigate these questions, I asked whether he wanted to go to Jerusalem and be tried there regarding them. So that was in the whole truth regarding what we saw in verses 9. But be that as it may, verses 21 says, but when Paul appealed to be kept in custody for decision of the emperor, I ordered him to be held until I could send him, which we saw in our verses uh, 12 as far as our last exposition is concerned. Verses 22, then Agrippa said to Festus, I would like to hear the man myself tomorrow, said he. You will hear him. So I believe it is in our next exposition when we shall have actually the thing of also Paul testifying before Agrippa the second regarding all these particular things that were, were laid against him. So this is indeed an interesting narrative and it shows how God orders each and every event for his own glory. So Festus had, Felix had, the Jewish leaders had, the priests had, but now also Agrippa is going to face the man that actually wasn't ashamed of our of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Lord willing, next time we shall consider the last verses as far as chapter 20, 25 is concerned. And then we shall go on building onto that chapter 26, 7 and 8. And then we see how we shall wrap up this book. So as for now, I want to just say may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Shalom.